Welcome back to iCoach Nutrition Radio. What is going on, guys? And I've got a, uh, a little bit of a surprise for y'all today on today's podcast. Uh, somebody that I had the pleasure of working with here over the last six months or so I actually had the opportunity to uh, hit a little workout together because um, we found out that we live so close to each other. So that was fun. Um, but today he's going to come on the podcast and kind of share a little bit about his journey of working with iCoach Nutrition over the last six months or so. And um, I hope y'all get value out of this show. So without further ado, John, what's going on, my man? How are you? Hey, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm awesome. Amped and ready to go on a, on a Saturday morning, I'll tell you that. Amped and ready to go on a Saturday morning. I like it. I like it. Hey, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to make this happen on a Saturday morning. I know you're, you're a busy man and got a family and kiddo and, and everything there. So I'm glad that we can make this happen. And Hopefully, you know, those that listen to this, if there's anybody that is like John, who's a, a husband and a father and, and, you know, trying to juggle all of this with, with living a healthy lifestyle, you know, hopefully I'll be able to resonate with this as we kind of go through uh, his journey there. So, John, tell, tell the listeners a little bit more about you in terms of just like even some of the stats. So I mentioned you're a husband, a father, you're like kind of give some background, your age, your height, your weight. Um, and, and kind of like what you do for, for work there and, and just in life, some of those hobbies, just give people a little more background on you. Sure. Yeah. Um, you want, you want stats now or stats when, when we started, cause they're definitely different. Um, yeah, let's I, start with, uh, let's start with, uh, well, you can, you can share the, the, the changing stats from beginning to end real quick here. Um, we'll kick yeah. off with that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I called you to begin with, I think I was, I was around 240. um, and by the time we were done, um, I had gotten somewhere around 217, 216. We we're kind of floating right there before I had to kind of exit out just because of um, some life change in our world. Um, but that was a big deal because um, just that progress was a really good, healthy progress over that course of six months. Um, it's been sustainable progress, and we can talk a little bit more about that. But that was um, that was you know, obviously the, the eye catching, Hey, there was a difference in weight, difference in body composition, some of those things, um, that were, that were awesome. But, um, so getting that one off the table, um, uh, for me, I'm five, nine, uh, five, nine and a half on my driver's license. So I'll go with that sometimes. Um, but yeah, 240 now, 217, uh, on the scale. Uh, and I just turned 38 in the lovely month of October. So, I'm um, getting close to that big 4-0, excited about it. Uh, and then I've got a two-year-old, and then we got one on the way that's due December 31st, and we're excited to meet that baby girl. Um, and we're ramped up in that final stretch here. Uh, so it, there's a lot of getting him ready. You know, that life, I do business development for a uh, large commercial restoration company. And so there's a lot of building relationships. There's a lot of last minute emergencies when it could be eight o'clock at night, you're sitting down for dinner and you get a phone call. Hey, we've got a 10 story flood. Can you get your teams out ready to go? And you've got to respond like that, start coordinating, um, could be two in the morning. So th it just, there's a lot of things that could come into play that offset a normal schedule. Um, and Justin was great at being able to work with me through that and get me back on, you know, Hey, that, that rhythm may change for a day or two, but let's work and focus and stay disciplined and diligent to get back on, uh, you know, your regiment, get back into a schedule. Don't let that throw you off where in the past, those are things that I would use as excuses, right? Oh, well, I had a late night. That job kept me out until two in the morning. I don't need to hit the gym. I can recover. Oh, I'll wait until, you know, after the weekend and then I'll start you know, everybody says that, right? Hey, I'll start on Monday. I'll start, but that job may come in on Tuesday and then I've already convinced myself <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start back next Monday. Right. And then I, I've been defeated for a week instead of a day. Um, so that's part of what I do. And, and in the middle of all of that, I knew in the back of my mind, I needed a change. So if I backtrack six months, um, seeing where I was from, uh, you know, from a husband to a father, um, just in my professional world, I knew uh, my physical, you know, I, I wasn't happy with what I was seeing in the mirror. I wasn't happy with knowing who I used to be, um, athlete, all of those things. And I just, I wasn't that guy anymore. And as much as I could convince myself that I could change, that I could do it, that I could figure it out on my own, um, I just got to the realization that I needed help. I needed someone 
that was devoted that could look me, you know, look me in the eye and say, hey, John, you don't have it figured out. You're not doing it. Um, but guess what? I'm here to help you every week, put you on track and just keep pushing you in that direction. You can go, you can do business, you can do, you know, be a dad, be a husband, you can do all those things, but I'm going to help you figure out this piece of the puzzle. Um, and so part of that was just coming to the realization that I needed help, that I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own. Um, and so then I just started researching, started looking around in the area that I'm in, just hit the old Google machine. Um, and I see this, you know, stellar looking guy pop up with, uh, I coach nutrition. I was like, Hey, this, this guy's got a good physique. This guy looks like he, he knows what he's doing that. And I think in one of your photos, you were eating a donut and I was like, all right, dude, dude's jacked with a donut. I want to figure that out. Uh, and so then I just, I think I, either I reached out or went, uh, went on your website and, and filled out the little deal. You called me. Um, and even in that first conversation, I think I knew that there was going to be a, a, something, a different experience. Uh, I don't know if anybody listening has done this before, but I mean, on Instagram, I see like these, you know, Insta bodybuilders, right. And they've, they've got their eight week plan or they've got their 12 week plan where they're going to help you, you know, get shredded or whatever. And I fell into that. Hey, yeah, let me try that. And this guy's like, Hey, I'm going to coach you. We're going to walk through this. this is going to be great. I paid the guy the money and he gave me kind of a template, which I swear he just changed the name from all of those other clients. He just put my name in there and sent it over to me. Um, and even trying to go through it, like was hard to get him to get on a phone call or, you know, go back and forth in a, in a message to, just walked me through why I needed to do those things, what that looked like. And pretty much after that first initial kind of conversation, the guy ghosted me, any like updates, progress, anything like that. So I was very hesitant. And I told Justin this, I was very hesitant to, you know, do an online format. Like I even told him, I was like, man, I'd really love to meet in person. He's like, well, my schedule's not that easy, you know, it, I've got a lot of other things going on. He's like, let's just try this Zoom thing. He said, I promise I'm going to be, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be walking with you. We're going to be going through this journey together. You're not on your own. Let's just, you know, give it a try. And he, and then you even said, Hey, if that, if you, that still doesn't work, maybe we can make an effort to do something else, but I think this is going to work. Um, and that was a big thing. Cause I didn't want someone because I had been burned. I didn't want someone to just give me um, a, you know, a food plan and, Hey, here's, here's how to track your stuff and then be done. Cause I could Google that and figure it out. What I wanted was the accountability. What I wanted was someone to, to be able to redirect me because I knew myself, right? I know the reason I was going to you is because I was weak enough to not figure it out on my own. And so I needed someone that can come back and say, Hey, you're going in the right direction here, but man, you need, let's tweak this and let's attack that for a week. And so that, that, I guess, kind of lasered in focused on certain things right? Like, Hey, are you getting your fruits and vegetables? Right. No, something I never thought about. Hey, I just want to put some green stuff on my plate. Great. But actually dialing in and going, Hey, you need to hit five to 800 grams of, you know, fruits and veggies. Are you doing that? Hey, don't focus on anything else. How, how many times in your world does someone say, Hey, don't focus on anything else in your life this week, except getting 500, 800 grams of fruits and vegetables. Like, can you just do one thing? Great. And then that one thing turns into the two things and then two things turns into three things. Um, so that was very helpful for me to have someone in my corner who just kept moving me along towards like those little steps that ultimately, Justin, you were looking at the big picture, right? Hey, I want to get John here, but you were great at figuring out where I was and then the steps that it would take to get me there. Um, and I'm, grateful for you being able to do that and walk through that. And I know that I wasn't um, probably the easiest because um, I wasn't doing all of those things every week, um, but you were really good at just kind of redirecting and pointing out the wins. Because um, I think most people that are listening, I know I was this way, is that once I would hit a, I would get defeated or I would miss out on one thing. Like I was going for perfection. I wanted to, to hit everything. And if I missed one little thing, then to me, that was not perfection and I needed to restart, right? Like scrap it, let's go back to day one, week one, first workout, first thing, let's redo it all. When you were able to switch that mindset for me and say, no, you, dude, you got eight out of 10 wins. Like eight, you, you hit eight out of 10 of those things. 
great. Let's celebrate that. That's awesome. You made progress. Let's just fix these other two. And let's do that next week. And so it was never a restart. It was just constantly building on itself. And that, um, for me, was it helped my mindset. It helped change some of that. And I know we can talk through that a little bit. Of uh, I was constantly bringing those things up to you of um, just old habits or old things that I'd read on the interwebs, right, that, that pop up, these kind of Facebook fads that tell you carbs are bad or you don't need to eat at this time or, you know, all of these different things that you don't think about, but they kind of get into your subconscious. And so no matter what, when you've got someone who spent uh, years diving into books and, and devoting their life to learning actually um, what it is to, you know, eat properly, work out properly, all of those things. And they're telling you, hey, I, I live it, I know it, I've researched it and I'm telling you what the truth is, but I want to tell Justin, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I saw this thing on Facebook and it says this, and then I, like when you step out of it and you really analyze it, <laughs> you, you realize how dumb it is. But I think for me, when you're living in a life, you're like, no, no, no. I mean, I saw it. Yeah, some of it maybe is, has a bit of truth to it. Um, and so because it has a bit of truth, even though it's a, a bigger fallacy, um, we kind of latch onto it. And so carbs are the enemy or you know, eating late becomes this, this terrible thing that you don't want to do. And um, and you'd rather do that, not eat, than hit your protein goal for the day or, you know, whatever. So it was, it was a lot of transformative time in that six months that is, I mean, still going on. I know we haven't met for probably a couple of weeks now, um, but I still, I'm tracking, I'm walking through it. I'm thinking, you know, intentionally about my week, how I'm eating, what I'm doing, how I'm planning out my meals, what my family's eating, what my son's eating, right? Is it just fruit snacks and you know, donuts and French fries, canes, um, or am I actually planning out his health? Because he can't make the decisions. I've got to make those decisions for him. So am I being a better father by choosing a, a better path for him? Uh, and he's watching everything I put in my mouth. So if I'm forcing him to eat Brussels sprouts, but I'm over here eating French fries, you know, my actions don't really follow what I'm teaching him. So uh, I know I, I probably went a lot further into, into that than you asked me originally, but uh, that those are just some of the things that stand out to my time with you for sure. Wow. That was awesome, man. Yeah. Well, you definitely, uh, you definitely highlighted a lot there. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like taking notes here. so we can follow back up on it, <laughs> but I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was amazing. I mean, that was an amazing testimony of the last six months. And, you know, one thing I really want to highlight there is that for a lot of people, right. It's, it's this idea that, Hey, you know, they've, heard and they've and they've seen it on social media and, and whatever else as to like I can do this in 30 days or that you know I can change a habit in 21 days or whatever and like that's just you know I'm not saying it's necessarily not true everybody's different right the amount of time it takes for somebody to build a habit is different but you know when you come to me right at, at 38 years old here or whatever right like we we're combating 38 years of building habits of building that subconscious of building those beliefs Right. And so for somebody to think that they're going to change that in 31 days or, 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 or with a meal plan or whatever, it's like, it's, it's kind of setting unrealistic expectations for themselves, you know, because at the end of the day, everything that you just mentioned there in terms of like the habits that you're still doing now, six months later, well, those habits were built over six months. Right. So, I mean, you have, you set yourself up to be so much more successful and actually continuing with these habits, which is like, changing or transforming your lifestyle rather than just like following some diet or some plan or some training program, whatever, and then going back to your old life after that. Right. And right. I think that that's such yeah. a huge piece for people. Cause like it's, they got to understand like, Hey, you're not going to change your habits and your beliefs and your mindset and your, and your life in general in the span of 30, 60, 90 days or whatever, like six months, I would argue is like the bare minimum, you know? Um, so I love that, man. I think that's, I think that's amazing. Cause at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do here. Right? Like most people try to, they, they come to me and they're like, I've tried everything under the sun. I'm sick of being in this like all or nothing mindset of starting and stopping and trying to be perfect. Right? Like you said, if I, the second I screwed up, it was time to start over. Right. And, right. and so kind of getting out of that all or nothing mindset and realizing that, Hey, like there is kind of a, a middle ground there. Right. Like, I want you to enjoy life. There's the, the donut in the picture, right? But at the same time, like I want you to live a healthy lifestyle, 
right? So that you can live a, a, a great life, right? Um, so I love that, man. I think that that's such a, a big piece to highlight there because I think ultimately what people are trying to do here is they're, they're trying to, once they get to that place, they're, they're trying to transform their life um, and they've just got to realize that it's not going to be done with a meal plan or a set of macros or whatever. It's going to be done with like having the accountability and building the awareness for them to realize what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And, and start to create those changes in their life, start to create and build new habits that serve them uh, and their family, you know, in a, in a much healthier way. No, absolutely. It, you know, as you were, you were talking about, you know, these meal plans and, and these other things, the, the biggest thing was being able to look, you know, look at what you presented and then be able to walk through it in the, through the eyes of John Lyons, right? My context, my world, right? As, as a, as a husband, as a father, you know, as a, as a, you know, busy career guy, like all of those things. Cause like when I read a workout plan or a, or a meal plan and it's like, you know, get up, have breakfast, you know, have your meal, then at, you know, 4.30, have your pre-workout shake and then go to the gym and then do all these things. And I'm like, that time frame doesn't work for me. You know, when am I having time to have a pre-workout shake and then go to the gym and then figure figure all that out? Well, that guy doesn't have to get up and make sure his kid's ready for school, you know, all of those things. And so you're able to figure out pretty quickly that just following some plan doesn't, doesn't work. And the benefit was being able to walk through it with you and then for you to also call me out when I'm making excuses, right? Hey, just because you don't have the time, you, you don't see the time for that, you need to make the time for that, right? And so look at your schedule, be intentional about your week and make it non-negotiable. When is your non-negotiable time to work out? And come hell or high water, when anybody wants to, a buddy wants to meet you for coffee, great, is it during that time? Then t you're saying no to him, right? You're gonna have to say no because you've said yes to this. And that yes has to be louder than anything else that comes in. And you've got to, you, you use the word um, self-integrity, right? And that early on, I had lost a lot of self-integrity, right? Because I had made these false promises to myself. Hey, I'm going to do this. And I didn't follow through. And so the next time I made a promise, myself was going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't live up to the last five promises, what's how's this one going to be different and so early on you were preaching that of going hey you need to build some self integrity you need to be able to make a promise to yourself and keep it and sometimes that was just little stuff hey you need to make a promise that you're going to get up and go walk right can you do that yeah i can go walk you don't want to you don't want me to run i don't want to run um but getting up and walking sure and then it was like, okay, well, guess what? I just had a, I just had a win because I promised myself something and I followed through with it. And so the next time you do that, your, your own self is rooting you on and knowing that you're going to follow through. And that was a big thing. Um, and I'm sure that's kind of one of your staples, but that was, uh, and maybe you can speak to that a little bit more of why that's important. But for me, that was huge is just building that back up. Man, I love that. I, I think that, um, you know, the integrity bank account is kind of how I reference it, right? And so it's like everything, every time you say that you're going to do something, you follow through with it, you add a dollar into your integrity bank account. Every single time you say you're going to do something, you don't follow through it, you, you subtract a dollar away. And so the, the question becomes is what is your operating balance in life, right? And I think for a lot of like, people that, you know, again, it's like you have a team in reference to like your professional life and business, and then you've got a family, right? And, and so like, ultimately it's like, you, you follow through with those things with them, right? But sometimes like, whether it's just a lack of energy or time or whatever it may be, we, we, we basically just push ourselves down the, the totem pole, right? And so before you know it, you get into this state of like almost feeling like guilty or selfish if you do things for yourself and prioritize yourself, right? And so the reminder I always try to give really all the clients that I work with, but especially those that, you know, that are parents is like, if you can adopt the mindset of, of being okay with being selfish so that you can be selfless, like mm -hmm. it's an amazing mindset to adopt. And what I, what I mean by that simplified could just mean, hey, first thing to start your day is something for you, AKA being selfish, right? And do that one thing so that then you can go be selfless the rest of the day. So maybe it's a workout or maybe it's the morning routine or what, whatever it may be for you, right? But 
we've got to do that. We've got to prioritize ourselves because if not, you know, if, if we're not selfish, if we don't take care of our health, right, eventually we run ourselves into the ground. And what happens when Papa Bear gets sick or gets in, injured or whatever it may happen there, right? Then, yeah. I mean, then you're sitting there on the, on the couch or in bed or whatever and like wife's left to take care of everything. So it's like, we've got to take care of ourselves, right? We've got to be able to lead from the front there, especially talking to, you know, a, a, a husband there and a, and, a, and, a, and a leader of his family. It's like, we've, we've got to have those conversations because ultimately, like we've always said, it's like our kids are going to watch us. We're leading from the front. And, um, you know, I, I want my kids, just as I know you do, to, to know what it is to live a healthy lifestyle and not have maybe some of the beliefs that some people have as like it being so extreme and so hard and so unsustainable and, and make it more of something that, no, like this 100% makes me feel better, look better, perform better, and it enhances the quality of life for, for myself and my family, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. And this is something I, I kind of got away from, but you really helped get me back into, into this, this mindset. And the way I kind of think about it is, is us being a, like, I'm just a pitcher, right? And there are a bunch of things that I pour into. I pour into my wife, I pour into my son, I pour into my friends, my coworkers, all of those things. Those are glasses that I pour into. And at the end of the day, if I don't, like you said, get up and be self or selfish, right? So that's me getting up and getting getting filled up, right? Whatever that looks like for you, but getting getting filled up and then having something of, of value or actually having something to be able to pour out to all of those things. And then at the end of the day, you, I mean, you just run a day that you empty yourself. You pour, pour out to everything, um, knowing that you're gonna get up the next day and fill yourself back up, right? Like my goal is to, when I lay my head down on the pillow is to make sure that I've given my day everything I could and I've absolutely poured myself out knowing that I'm gonna get up the next day and, and get refilled. But the problem is, is that we may do that, but we don't take the time to refill, right? And then, so then the thing that we're, we're pouring out, it's, it's nothing, right? It's dust. We're, we're trying to pull from all these different ways to do it. And we've got nothing of value to give. And so if we want to be someone um, who has value and actually is a benefit to the people around us, then we absolutely need to make sure that we are getting filled up and at the start of the day um, and then ready to do that every day. And then you got to be intentional about continuing to do it and don't miss a day. Like just be, um, just, you know, be laser focused on doing that every day um, with, without any uh, distractions. Don't let anything take that away from you. You've got to own that and block it and protect it with everything in your might. And whatever that looks like, if you've got an early morning meeting, great. It just means you're going to bed earlier than the night before and you're getting up a little bit earlier because you're protecting your time because you need it because otherwise then you have I if I don't do that I literally have nothing to give to my wife to pour out to help her to do that and if I want to be a great husband and be better for for her then I need to find that time so that I have something of value to give to her if I want to be a great dad which I say I do right like you talked about this very on hey what do you want your vision to be what do you want to look like in five years and it's those those promises hey these are the things I want to be these are the things I'm committed to great it's fun to put it on paper but it's hard to put it into reality over the six months, right? And you, you've got to have that. I mean, you talked about being able to, to see it and have it visible so that because we're human, man, there are times when I don't want to get out of bed. I'm sure there's times you don't want to get out of bed. I'm, there's times when you, I'd rather be lazy. My nature is to be lazy. But man, that motivation, that was another piece of this lifestyle thing was getting the motivation, putting that in to to get out of bed, right? When I don't want to, great. But I saw my, you know, my son, am I doing, am I setting an example for him? Great, get out of bed, just do it. Take the first step. And getting, getting motivated to continue to push towards your goals. I think that's part of the, the issue is that everybody, shoot, that's probably the reason your, your sales or you know, your client interest probably goes up in January, right? Beginning of the year, everybody's got dreams and hopes and goals of, of, of changing the world and then it goes down pretty quickly because we l people love to dream but people don't want to work for the dream and that's where it comes into that's the nitty-gritty of the six months you want to work you need someone who's helping you do that and that's why you were such a big benefit it's kept pointing me to to my own goals it wasn't even like you gave me the vision for my life of saying hey john this is where i want to see you in six months you literally had me figure it out 
and then said, dude, I'm not doing anything other than pushing you towards the things that you said you wanted to do. And either you were lying then, or, you know, maybe your vision changed, but these are the things you said you want to do. And I'm just pushing you towards it. Are we going to do it? Great. Stack hands, walk in and let's, let's keep going. Um, but that's, people need to really evaluate where they want to be. And that's, that's a big part of having a coach is sifting through the BS and figuring out what, what they actually want to get to and, and working towards it because it's got to be important enough that you fight for it. Cause if it's not that important, then you're not going to put up the fight and you're not going to eat the way you need to eat. You're not going to be intentional. you you know what I mean? If it's not that great of a dream, who cares? Yeah, man, super powerful. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of that why statement, right? It's like, if you're, you know, like when your why is strong enough, you can overcome any how that comes your way. And, you know, like you, like every other client that I work with, like the reality of it is, is that this is not the only thing that's going on in your life. This is the, not the only thing that you're focused on. Like most people have, you know, a, a husband or wife, they've got kids, they've got work, they've got, they've got a million other things going on. And I think that's why going back to that January point there, that's why so many people, you know, like they have the, 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 the new year's resolution or whatever, but like after that first month, that's it. Because what did they do? They repeated the cycle of going from 100% all out to 100% all in, right? And, and, and forgetting that they have a million other things going on in life. So that's why it's so important to meet you where you are in, the, in this journey. Because for you, if, if like any other time up into this, like if I would have started off with, hey, you need to focus on, you know, we're just using this vegetable and fruit example, but hey, you need to just focus on this and that's it. You'd be like, what? Like that's, that's nothing. That's such a simple thing. Or like going for a walk. Like, why would I waste my, why would I waste an hour going on a walk? You know, like, it's just like a lot of these habits, like we don't see a lot of value in because we're like, these are simple things we've heard a million times, but when you put all these things together, right. And you're actually consistent, which that's the, that's the magic pill there. It's called consistency. If you can actually be consistent with these basic habits, then that's what leads to you being able to, to even want to fill up your cup right? Because how are you supposed to wake up in the morning and want to fill up your cup if you get, you never get good sleep, you, you eat like crap, you don't work out, you're stressed beyond belief, you drink way too much alcohol, and God knows what else on, under the list. Like, you're not going to be a motivated individual. Of course not, right? You know, and, and, and a lot of people, they want to just completely change everything and turn that around. And some people can do that. I'm like, you know, awesome. Um, but for a lot of people, like, it's just not realistic, you know, like I would say, let's pick the worst thing. Let's pick the lowest hanging fruit there for you. And let's fix that first, like you said, and then we'll start this process of kind of habit stacking. And before you know, it, it's been six months and you're like, oh my God, like, look, look what's happened to my life. Right. Or a year or whatever. So yeah, man. And there's I, also the, the, the outside forces too, right? Like you talk about, I mean, if you are, you're doing all of those things, right. There are other, in, other influences that aren't making the decisions you are. I mean, sometimes it's in your own house, right? I mean, I've got a pregnant wife. Do you think it's easy to want to eat healthy when you've got a seven month pregnant wife? Do you think she wants grilled chicken and broccoli? No, she wants other things. And you know how, you, how hard it is to eat your plate and then watch her eat some other awesome deliciousness? That's not easy, but that's an outside force that a lot of people deal with, right? Because it's a personal decision that we want to make. And so just because we as maybe a, as a husband or a wife or, you know, wh whatever we're doing to, you know, as a person to try to do that, the other person in the house may not be making that decision, right? So then you've got to try to figure that out. That, that's going to be hard for you to go all in because then you've got to make the constant decision. Go, okay, great. Dinner every night, two meals. And you say that and you're like, yeah, great. Well, I can do that. But then when you try to implement it, try going grocery shopping for two meals every night for the week it doesn't get that easy, right? Or then it's just friends. If you have the habit that you've built of friends who want to go out all the time and every time they go out, they want to drink a lot. And then you all of a sudden decide, hey, that's not me anymore. I'm not doing that. Those friends aren't going to stop wanting, you know, they're still going to invite you. They're still going to tempt you. They're still going to ask you to come. Hey, just have one, right? And then one turns into six. What I, I mean, it, that happens. And so then you've got to build in the, how am I going to navigate home life, friend life, work life. For me, one of the big things that I struggled with, right, was taking clients to lunch. That was a, that was a big deal because it, it's a big part of what I do. And so then I would have to text you and navigate 
menus and hey what, what what would be the best option here but i had to think through that because it wasn't a reality for me to eat go to a restaurant with a client and go hey can you warm up this meal that i made and uh you go ahead order what you want but I, i'm eating this right now <laughs> they're not doing business with me or at least they're thinking i'm really weird um so yeah navigating the outside forces with what you're talking about is you may be able to to make that decision but that's your decision and there's other people who haven't made that decision you either have to get them to buy in what you're doing for six months and get them to, and most of them will cheer you on and push you forward. You've got to be intentional to know that those are things that are going to happen because it's life. It's not a perfect world on paper. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, at the end of the day, you just, you can't rely on others to accomplish your goals, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, there's so many, you know, couples that I work with and like, I hear it back and forth between the, you know, the, the, the husband, the wife, whatever. And it's like, well, they do this and they do that. And I'm like, like, that's the same thing as you comparing yourself to other people and how fast they get results. Like stop looking outward to achieve success. Like start looking inward, you know, because that's really where, that's how you accomplish goals. There is figuring out what you're doing to self-sabotage yourself. And, you know, you're, you're hundred percent right. We're a product of our own environment. I, I shared this with, with some clients recently here. I, had, I, I thought this was a great idea to, to, to take Josiah and go get uh, Halloween candy for Halloween today. And um, this was like about a week ago or whatever. And so here it is, got candy in my house. Why did I bring oh, yeah. candy in my house? My candy <laughs> bowl, I ate the whole candy bowl before Halloween even got here. So all that candy, like I literally brought it into my house, ultimate form of self-sabotage. What was I thinking? The, the nutrition guy over here, right? And I went on over a week basically to crush the whole candy bowl because it's there walking past it at night, whatever it may be. And I'm like, wow, like even me, you know, like 100%, I'm no different than anybody else, right? I'm still susceptible to doing all of these things, right? Of course, I would rather have frozen margaritas and tacos rather than chicken and broccoli. Like, of course, you know, but um, it's just, it's just so interesting. You know, we, we are 100% a product of our own environment. And, you know, I, when you have a pregnant wife or whatever, like that environment is 100% going to get affected. And so it's like, yeah, what yeah. is that self-discipline look like? Here's one thing I will say, though, for, for my dads out there, soon to be dads out there, the bet, and I'm going to be doing this for this next time around for me, I didn't do it the previous time here, but if your wife gets pregnant, that's nine months of them not being able to drink alcohol. Go and do nine months of not drinking alcohol with them and watch what happens to your body composition, right? I mean, let's be real. Like what better time to, to make that commitment to yourself and see what happens than, than that time? Because they can't drink it either, you know? So if anything, when you're drinking and they can't, like they're probably just like my wife, she's like, when I'm pregnant and I can't have my glass of wine, like I, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, that's something that I have to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's a sacrifice I have to make for nine months. You know, I love my wine or whatever. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, but it's like, yeah, man, like, you know, yeah, and that's actually not a bad point. Cause, cause not only do you help yourself from a physical standpoint, you can score some awesome husband points by saying, you know what, honey, I am going to sacrifice with you for these nine months. I'm not going to drink. Don't tell her the other side that Justin talked you into it. Just say, just talk about the sacrificial piece and just score some awesome husband points and just live out the rewards of that over the nine months. Um, so I'll leave that there. There you go. Little, little husband tip, you know. You're getting nutrition training and relationship advice in this podcast. That's it. What do you, what All do you in think? one, you know. <laughs> All in one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, so John, I want to I want to highlight a few a, a few other points or ask a few more questions in terms of just like the coaching process. So, obviously, you know there are a lot of different things that are out there, right? You have the experience with that one guy before this, and there's you know I've always said there's the ninety nine dollar meal plans and whatever else, right? But like when you go to, when, when we have that initial discovery call, right. And we start and we talk about everything and we talk about pricing and all of that. Like, I mean, you're investing in yourself 100%, right. I mean, this definitely isn't a $99 meal plan. I mean, you're spending a good amount of money on yourself. And, and kind of what I always say is like, the more you pay, the more you pay attention, right. The clients that I had when I first started my business, however many years ago that, you know, I, I started off charging like a hundred dollars a month or whatever, like, the clients I have now, they get way better results. They're way more invested. They, they, they do make life-changing transformations, rather as before, it just wasn't that. So 
like what made you kind of like pull the trigger, especially after having the experience that you had to, to say, hey, you know what, like I'm willing to invest this type of money into myself um, and have that belief that you're actually going to get the value out of it, you know, after after six months later. Yeah, I mean, the the biggest thing is, I think there's absolute truth to what you're saying is that there needs to be the price point needs to hurt a little bit. And, and what I mean by that is, is people are coming to you and they, for me, it was continuing to look at, I need to pay someone to help and to, you know, what is the best value that I'm getting for my money? Um, and I realized right off the bat, I'm going to have someone I knew going into that. I wanted someone in my corner to continuously push and coach me. I mean, if you look at some of the greatest athletes of all time, right? Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, like you could go down the list, but every one of those has a coach in their corner. And if these guys are the top, you know, you know, top in their sport, top athletes in the world that people look up to, and they have a coach in their corner pushing them. And I'm just Joe Blow dad bot over here. Who's just trying to make a better change. Like I can invest a little bit in my own life to make that better and have a coach that's going to make me better in this area when I don't have the time to sit down and focus on all the little things, but I've got a coach that's constantly directing me. I knew I wanted that. And so I just needed to find the right person. And, but that, what I say that it needs to hurt a little bit is because the value isn't always coming from you. The value is, Hey, if I'm paying this amount a month over the course of six months, I need to understand the value is how much I'm putting into it. And if it's just, you know, 10 bucks a month or it's 20 bucks a month or whatever, I mean, all of us probably pay that for a gym and half of us use it because it doesn't hurt enough for us to care that we're paying that. And so looking at that, it's like, man, if I'm going to pay this, I'm going to bust my butt the entire month to get my money's worth out of what I'm paying for Justin to push me to do. And so it's, it's, it's both sides of it. It's not just what I was expecting from you, which during that call, I knew I was getting someone who was going to push me every week, push me forward, push me towards my goals, who was going to evaluate enough to help me understand my context and where I am and what hurdles I was going to face and help me navigate that. The value of having someone to be able to personally structure that and push you towards your goals is, you probably could have said whatever number. Um, I say that now on the back end. Um, because I didn't want you to throw out whatever number. I mean, your, your numbers are great. Um, but the, uh, that extra value of knowing, okay, if I'm paying this much, does this motivate me to do the thing I'm asking Justin to push me to do? And if that price point does that, then great, dive in. Um, but it, it needs to hurt you enough to propel you towards the, the goals that you're trying to achieve. I hope that makes sense, but that that's that was for me. It had to, like you said, it had to be a pain point a little bit. Um, yeah, no, it totally makes sense, man. I mean, if you think about it, it's the Planet Fitness model, right? Planet Fitness charges nine ninety nine a month or whatever, and they have God knows how many members. And if you walk into one of those places, it's empty because nobody goes, right? They forget about that, you know. And 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 yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, Planet Fitness doesn't want you to go. Like they bring like pizza and donuts and all that stuff, like. The more people come and use that that equipment, the the more money they're going to spend on servicing that equipment, right? So if people don't yeah. come to the gym, Cleaning. if they charge such a low price point, they just forget about the membership. That's the model for them, right? And that's not a model of like wanting to help somebody transform their life and live a healthier lifestyle and all of these things. It's like that's just a model of like I, I don't I don't even know what to call it. I mean, but there's a lot of that in the nutrition and fitness space there, just in in general. So I think if you and, I, if and, you th I, and that's actually that's actually a good point is that one of the other things that I like that you said that no, like I haven't gotten from anyone else or I don't see from anyone else was not only was there an entrance strategy with you, but there was an exit strategy. So it wasn't like, Hey, I want you to come on and I want you to pay this forever because you're going to need it forever. Cause ultimately if you do your, you know, what your, your, if you hold up your end of the bargain, then we don't need you forever. We need you for six months to get, create that lifestyle and then be able to, to do this on our own, right? Ultimately, and to be able to do it and maybe even teach others, maybe teach our wife, maybe teach our, my son, be able to, to know it and live it enough to be able to, to, you know, outside of that, kind of be our own eye coaches to, to the people we love and care about, right? Um, and so I love that you had an exit strategy 
and that, hey, I'm going to get you onboarded, but I'm also going to get you offboarded so that I set you up well to do this without me. Uh, and that, that was a big deal for me because I, I didn't want you to have, I didn't want to feel like I was doing this for 12 months or a year. And I didn't have that, that out somewhere in there. Yeah. And that's a great point. I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, I, I did personal training for eight years, you know, before I kind of like dove into the online world and like, there's a lot of personal trainers out there. There's a lot of nutrition coaches out there that like that, that's the model that they know and believe in and preach in is like, you'll have a personal trainer for the rest of your life, or you'll have this, you know, nutrition coach for the rest of your life. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. You know, there's some people that just truly, you know, love that coaching relationship and it develops into accomplishing all these other goals um, and all these things. So it can be a, it can be a good thing, but yeah, ultimately like I want this to be, and I tell people this on the initial discovery call, like I want this to be the last nutritionist that you, you know, that you ever invest in, right? Like at the end of the day, nutrition is a skill set, no different than like finances, right? And I need to educate you and equip you with the tools, right? To allow you to, to, to not only, you know, accomplish the goals that you're coming to me with right now, right? But to set you up to be successful long-term and to get out again of, of the cycle of what are so many people that are in of like either being, you know, eating health, like on a diet or not on a diet, eating healthy or not eating healthy or like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's understanding that we don't have to um, be in these extremes. We don't have to try to fit ourselves into this cookie cutter box of a, of a diet or whatever, you know, really at the end of the day, the principles of living a healthy lifestyle, right? Getting enough sleep, good quality sleep, exercising consistently, eating healthy, staying hydrated, like stress management. Th these are all the things that are like, regardless, like, we have to prioritize these things for the rest of our life. Somehow we got into the habit of brushing our teeth every day. So you, you do that every day for some reason, right? Like let's, let's get these, these habits going there too. And when you do it, you, you feel better, you look better, you perform better and it becomes a no brainer. It's just, you got to give yourself enough time to prove that to yourself, you know? And a lot of people are in the mindset, even still to this day, me getting on discovery calls with people of like, yeah, you know, I was, I was doing 1200 calorie keto for two weeks and I lost seven pounds, but then I didn't lose any pounds for the next two days. So I just gave up and quit. And I'm like, wow, like people's perception of reality is so distorted because of the news and media and everything else. You know, it's like, we've got to get out of that, of that short-term mindset and those like instant results, the instant gratification world that we live in and really start to play the long game you know, instead of waiting. Yeah, I, I would I'm imagine, uh, <clears throat> I would imagine you, you get that a lot and you fight that a lot because, I mean, everywhere you look, I mean, it, heck, if you went to bodybuilding.com right now and you looked at plans, you're going to see anything from like four week shred to an eight week better body or at max, you're probably looking at a 12 week workout program, but they're all within that time frame. And so everybody does that. Instagram, everybody puts in this like eight weeks to a better you or whatever. So you're probably constantly fighting the, the expectation that you're going to say something like an eight, eight week, 12 week, four weeks, you know, we're going to get in and change the world and you're going to go do all these things. Um, you say something like, Hey, this is going to take months, right? Five months, six months. I want you to be committed to something for, for this long. Um, I think that changes it. And that already switches that mindset of going, okay, this is a long haul change because honestly, I don't think if somebody there's probably value in somebody working with you for eight, eight weeks, but I would say if someone worked with you for eight, that eight week mark, they're just getting ramped up. Like, I think they're just getting to the point where, where they're hitting their stride and that's where they need you the most. It's not, yes, it's getting there, but it's also living life in it for a little while to understand the nuances of continuing to do it when there's hurdles, right? What would Mike Tyson say? Everybody's everybody's great until you get punched in the mouth. Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth, right? Some of that over my six months was getting punched in the mouth and being able to talk with you about it and going, man, I was going good, but then I hit this hurdle. How do I overcome that? What do I do here? Um, and that's not an eight week life is better change. You know, check the box. I did a diet. That's real life change happens over a longer period of time. And I think people need to understand that and and kind of dig their heels in for the long haul.
Yeah. I mean, that's such a great point, man. That's why, I mean, honestly, if you think about like, you know, I always say like six months is bare minimum, but if you think about a year and you think about everything that happens to you in the year, it's like, I know you can be, I know you could be perfect if this is the only thing that you have to focus on. Right. Imagine if you didn't have any of the other responsibilities, this is all you're doing. Like, I know that you could, you could do this. Right. But like what happens when, um, I don't know, there's an issue with the job or you're super busy or traveling all the time, or you find out you're going to have a kid or you're, you, what, whatever, like anything under the sun, you name it, right. Anything that kind of like throws you off course there, how do you navigate through it? Right. Like how do you overcome adversity? Right. And if you think about anything else in life, right. Anything else in life that you've accomplished that was worth accomplishing, right. It never happened overnight. It never happened in a short period of time. Like you had to overcome adversity in order to accomplish it, you know? And so really it's no different. I, I tell people all the time, like, if you come to me trying to get out of a hundred thousand dollars in debt, or you come to me trying to lose a hundred pounds, the mindset and the, and the play in the long game and the journey, like all of it's going to be very, very, very similar. Right. Like you yeah. have to go into it with that. And I, and it's my job as a coach to set those expectations for you from the very beginning, because if you come into it thinking that it's going to be a 30 day thing, which is what most people are conditioned to, we're going to fail, yep. you know? And so I, I always, I'm always like, look, like six months is the, the bear, the bear, bear, bear minimum, especially if you're coming to me and you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, however old you are. I mean, I'm combating all of those years, right? So you come to me at 60 yeah. years old, it's, it's 100,000 percent going to take you a year, two years, three years to change your habits for sure. You know, right. Unless, or, or unless you that, have a like, life changing I mean, I, scare or something like that. Like if somebody comes to me and they're like, I just got diagnosed with XYZ, right? And they have that scare, that life changing scare, and they have like grandchildren now that they're like, Oh my god, am I gonna get to see them grow up? Like once you start getting real serious, again, what is that? That's your why. Like you have a strong enough why now, and when you have a strong enough why, it'll help you overcome anything. Like if I had a, a you know, my kids are my my wife and kid are trapped under a burning car. All of a sudden, I'm Superman. I can lift the car up. I couldn't do that if, I, if that wasn't the case, right? Right. So it's like we just we got to get out of the reactive place, though, right? Because if we if we wait for whatever it is to happen, sometimes you know it's it's not too late, but sometimes it's way more challenging than if you could just get started on it now and maybe not even have that thing happen to you later on. You know, the clients that get diagnosed yeah. with something are always the most motivated when they come to me because they just got the scare from their doctor telling them that they're going to have to get, you know, what uh, weight loss surgery or their, what, you know, I've, I've heard everything under the sun. So you gotta, you gotta no, establish that why for sure. And you probably have to, like, I know when I came to you, the, you know, I was at 240, but I didn't, I didn't gain that weight over 30 days. I didn't gain that weight over two months. It was probably, Hey, I put on, you know, four, you know, five or six pounds over one year. And then the next year, probably another five or six pounds. And then, so, I mean, I'm coming to you with literally baggage of, you know, four or five years of, Hey, this is what I've done. Right. I've added this weight. I've done all that to, to wrap your head around fixing all of what you've done over the course of the course of three to four years and get that done in 30 days or to, to drop that weight in 30 days. And not just drop it, but sustain it and actually move towards a healthy lifestyle to do that in the 30, 45 days, 60 days. Um, it's just not, it's just not realistic for, for true change. If you want for these people to come back two years from now and to be living the life that you laid out and helped them create, it's got to be sustained over time so that it is, you know, it is true life change. So that's, that's just a mentality of getting in there and setting that expectation on the front end. Yeah. I mean, if, if my only goal was to, to show off your before and after picture, I wouldn't care about your health. I would just starve you to death and do it in 30 days so <laughs> I can get really fast results and market it. Right. Which a lot of people do, yep. you know, but yep. like I, what I care about more than anything is, is me following up with you at six months, a year, three years, five years later. And like, you're still doing it. Like, it wasn't something you stopped. It was like a lifestyle that you embodied moving forward. And so John, definitely want to respect your time here on the Saturday morning, but last question here, what's, what does that mean to you now in terms of like going forward for the rest of your life? I mean, 
like we have an opportunity to work together again, of course, I'd love to work with you, but like, I want you to, to be that, you know, like, especially after graduating at Coach University, like I want you to be able to, to be that. So what, what does it mean now for you and your family to live a healthy lifestyle going forward? What are the, what are going to be the things that you're going to keep prioritizing and that you want to kind of instill in your family so that you can, you can lead from the front and set that example for them? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, man, there was, there was great change for me. Not physically the, the biggest one I remember, you know, texting you a picture when, on one of our sessions where we had gone on vacation, you know, in Austin. And I was like, dude, I took my shirt off for the first time confidently in a long time. And like, we celebrated that, that part is awesome. And that is going to happen. But to me, it's funny. I went into it is that's, that was my goal, right? It was just physical selfish. I wanted to look better in the mirror, but it became almost the bottom thing on the list for me because what I took for my time with you was being intentional with my life. And that, that word, if I could, you know, after this whole thing, if someone gets off of this and they leave with one, one word, I would say being intentional. How can they be intentional in their life? And that's what it looks like because that's from the start of your week. How am I being intentional throughout my week to plan my meals? What are the hurdles that I'm going to look for and be proactive and not reactive to, to life? right? So it comes with being intentional with planning out my meals, planning out my dinners throughout the week. What are the times I'm going out? What are my lunches with clients? What are my breakfasts look like? Do I have enough time to do all that? Being intentional with my food um, and then being intentional to plan my workouts, right? When am I fitting those in? What what events do we have? What appointments do we have? All of those things and where am I going to work out? And what are my non-negotiables for the week? That would be my workout, right? When am I doing it? And what are the things that are going to try to derail me? but being intentional to block them on the front end. And then ultimately being intentional with my family. How am I being intentional with my wife on Monday through, you know, every day of the week, what am I doing to be intentional with her? What am I doing to be intentional with my son? What does that look like to, am I going to the park to play with him, to get him outside, to get him some activity, to get him to run around? Because he, he's not going to do that. He's not going to wake up and go, Hey, how am I working out? He's two. He doesn't care. He just wants to play with dad, but I need to make the time to do that because ultimately he's getting some physical health out of it, right? Being intentional about what he eats. So many times we're just reactive, right? We're coming home and he's screaming from daycare and he just wants fries. And the easy thing, yeah, pull into canes, get him some fries, awesome. Or, hey, actually, you know what? Mom and dad planned their week and we've actually got food waiting for you. So when we get home, you're gonna eat a better meal than that. If you can be intentional with your life, everything changes. If you can be proactive in your life, everything changes. The hard part is doing it. The hard part is setting up the time and planning it because Sunday, nobody wants to do anything on Sundays, right? You're trying to relax and and you're not thinking about your week. You're putting it off and you're just procrastinating till Monday. Well, then when you procrastinate till Monday, Monday hits you in the face and then you don't have time to do what you need to do. And then it rolls into Tuesday, rolls into Wednesday. So be intentional. And you, what you help me understand ultimately is to be intentional and to be proactive. And if I can do those things in every area of my life, John Lyons is not only a a better person, I'm a better husband, I'm a better father, I'm a better coworker. I bring value to the people around me if I'm intentional and proactive. Um, And the John Lyons six months ago was not doing that. I was reactive um, and I wasn't bringing a lot of value to the people that I say I love and I care about. I could say it, but it was lip service because my actions weren't, weren't following what I ultimately wanted to do and be. And so you helped me transform into that is just being a, a man who is intentional and proactive and doing the things that I've told myself I was going to do, but also committed to my family to do. So if, I hope I've told you this a bunch of times, but I, thanks. Thank you for, for helping get me to this point. And um, you've definitely been an awesome coach and a, uh, I've said it, uh, a good friend um, coming out of this. Man. Well, thank you, man. That, that means a lot to me. You know, like I, when I get to hear things like that, I mean, this is like, I've been doing this now for 10, 11 years. And it's like every time, like that never gets old right there. That's, that's why I do what I do. You know, every time I can get to hear uh, a thank you like that, I mean, that's, that's, that's the game for me. Right. Because that's, that's like life. I mean, that's life changing. That's, that's me. That's like God putting me on this earth and actually like doing something with my life and like helping other people and, and making even a, you know, somewhat of an impact in, in their life and, and just getting them to see the value in 
living a healthy lifestyle and what it can do for the one life that you get. You know, I could wait, I could die yeah. today, tomorrow. Like there's no guarantee. So man, like being able to lay your head down at the end of the day on that pillow and know that you, you emptied the tank and, and you're going to fill yeah. it up that next morning and get ready to do it. I mean, that's, 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 that's life. That's the game. That's, that's, that's intentional living right there. You know? So yeah. I love it, man, dude. I just want to say thank you again for, for, for everything, for the experience, for the journey, for, for taking the time to do the podcast today. I think this is going to be super valuable for, for a lot of people, especially those, those dads out there, you know, like, look, dads, like I, I get it. Like John gets it. Like it's, it's hard. You got a lot, of, you got a lot on your plate. You got a lot of responsibilities, you know, and sometimes it can feel selfish to prioritize yourself, but man, like if you can just slowly but surely start to work those things into your life, watch what it does in terms of transforming all of these other areas that you're, that you're already working so hard at. So dude, I, uh, I appreciate you, man. And, uh, I look forward, we, we still need to get our, our, our families together at some point here. And I'm telling you, Josiah, <laughs> that, that these, these little boys are going to like, they're the same age. So, so they got an opportunity. To oh come yeah. Up there. So, um, uh, that'll be cool to see, man. That'll be cool to see. I'm excited for that. John, any final words that you have for the, the listeners here as we kind of close out the podcast? No, I, hey, if, uh, if you've got a friend who needs some help, um, give, uh, you know, tag him in a post from Justin or get him on this podcast or, or do something. Um, if you're not pushing them to be better, at least open the door for, for Justin to push them to be better. Um, and, uh, and just find where you can bring value to the people around you uh, and, uh, and just attack it with, with, all a, a abandonment. I love it. Awesome, my man. Well, John, I appreciate you once again. And uh, until next time, my friend.